Former Gaming here, and you want to learn how to use the Pokey Radar correctly in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl? Well, that's exactly what we're going to show you how to do today, so let's get started. Before we get started, there's a couple things that you need to do. Number one, you need to go stock up on Super Repels or Max Repels, either one. Some people think super repels are slightly more efficient, so that's what I bought in. I didn't do the math because I'm lazy, but super repels or max repels, you need to buy those, and we'll explain why in a moment. And number two, you need to buy some balls. Lots and lots and lots and lots of balls. <laughs> so the preferred ones are repeat balls because you're going to be catching the same Pokemon over and over again. And also you want to buy quick balls as well. And possibly, if you can afford it, if you have had enough money in this game, you can buy a particular ball to match the ball aesthetic of your possible shiny Pokemon that you're looking for. So, once you have all those things, you're set, and then you want to head to the area that you want to catch your Pokemon. But before you do that, if you don't know how to get the Pokey Radar, the first thing that you do is you come over to Sand Gem Town, and you go in, you talk to Professor Rowan, and he will give you the Pokey Radar. You'll also talk to Oak there, who'll unlock the National Dex if you haven't done that already, bada bing bada boom, which they all happen at the same time. But once you've done that, then you also do want to come down here to Ramanos Park, and Professor Oak will give you the app that'll give you the chain counter. So you can manually count your chains, or you can base it off of, you know, however many balls you've thrown or whatnot. But without this app, you won't know specifically what your chain counter is at. So it's very good to have this app. I actually did my first chain without it, um, but I have it now, so it's great to have. So once you've got all that, head over to the area that you want to start your Pokey Radar chain at. So I'm over here off of, um, I already forgot what route this is. We're at Route 215, and we're looking for Ponyta. So the first thing that I recommend doing is, if you've already gotten a shiny, like I have my shiny here, <laughs> go into your party and return to ball. It's not required. You don't have to put them in the ball, but as you can see, it, there's a lot less going on on the screen. It makes it a lot easier to focus. They don't get in your way. Definitely recommend put your Pokemon back inside the ball just to make it easier to see everything. Then step number one, after you've done that, or step number two, I don't know, math is hard, man. Uh, <laughs> it's come over and use your repels if you haven't already. All right, so I've already got a repel in effect. So once you've done that, now you can start your chain. So you save the game, and the reason that you want to save the game is because if you fail the chain, you can recoup all your items. So you won't lose any of your balls, you won't lose the max repels that you've been having to turn on and on over and over again. So you just recoup all your items. So what you do is, what I've done is you go to your bag, go to your key items, and go to the Pokey Radar. And I have it as the only item registered. So if it's the only item registered, all you have to do is press the plus or minus button on your controller and boom, the grass starts shaking. So what you want to do when the grass starts shaking is there should be four shaking grasses. And it's possible there's one by that tree. I can't really see, but I only see three. And normally what you would do here is you would run around, reset your radar, and start it again. But just for demonstration purposes, what you can do is you want to go to the grass that is at least four spaces away, four steps away. So this one over here in the bottom right is four away. So I'm going to go to that, see what we get, and see what happens. So what you'll do is you go one, two, three, four, and down one. And are we lucky you're going to get a Ponyta? We get a Kadabra. Not what we wanted. And you can do this two ways. You can either reset and start the whole thing over. Or if it's if it's your first one, I mean, so you've used a couple steps out of your repel. Not a big deal. I just run away. I just run away. And then I just come over, run around in the middle for a little bit. It's going to ask you to use another repel. Whatever reason I had a repel on, I don't know. I always have repels on. <laughs> So you run around until it's recharged. It takes about 50 steps and then you press it again and then boom. All right, so now we have four shaking because we weren't near the edge. Since we were at the edge, one of the other squares the last time was probably off the grid. So 
Um, I'm gonna take this one over here. So one, two, three, four. You don't have to D-pad walk it. You can just run, but it works. All right, perfect. And now we have our Ponyta. So we've got the Pokemon that we're looking for. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna catch it. And I've already caught a bunch of these, but I'm gonna catch it again. So if you haven't caught one already, it's probably best to use like an Ultra Ball or something. Um, but if you've already caught them, just use a Repeat Ball. I've got a hundred of them. Plenty enough for a chain like this and it should pretty much catch it almost instantly. And if it does, you're good to go. You can faint the Pokemon, but there is a lower percentage um, for the chain to continue. So I believe if you faint the Pokemon and they are four steps away, you have an 83% chance for the chain to continue. If you catch the Pokemon, you have a 93% chance for the chain to continue. So you always have higher odds if it's at least four steps away and you faint the po and you catch the Pokemon. Sorry, catch them. Catch, catch, catch. Catch them, catch them. Gotta catch them all. Gotta catch them all. Pokemon. All right, so we'll just come down here to this one. And this is, this is really the process. So what you'll do is you just do this over and over again. And you're thinking, oh man, this sounds super easy. <laughs> well, well about that so the thing about doing this method is it's it's easy in theory but it's a lot of luck and rng based so you have they, they've done the, the math on it i haven't done the math because i stopped doing math in like middle school and i'm an old man now the math is you have about a five percent chance to successfully chain up to 40 and i'm gonna put the odds on the screen here's the, the odds for a shiny Pokemon drastically increase once you get to 40. As you can see, if you hit a chain of 40 in a row, you have a 1 in 99 chance of getting a shiny Pokemon. So it's basically guaranteed. And the way it rolls is you actually have a 1 in 99 chance in each patch of grass. So it's not four ninety nine. Don't don't get it wrong. It's not four ninety nine because each one rolls independently. You just you have four separate chances of one in ninety nine odds. So it's you have a really high chance. Um, so it's 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 not the end of the world. It's it's definitely possible. And as you see, if it works, your chain continues. And then so if you want to actually check your chain now, you simply press R and. Uh, and press it twice to make it bigger so you can actually see and we've got a chain of two for Ponyta and as you see my longest chain was 44 for Shinx I actually chained four shiny Shinx in a row um, I tried some Pikachus failed we've tried Ponyta before I got mad failed I, I don't know why I it didn't reset back to zero I must have just ran away and got mad or something <laughs> but yeah so it's definitely fun um, and you can leave it open there's not been any indication that leaving it open there affects it continuing or not um one thing you do want to look out for is when they are near each other they're like touching there is a higher chance for the chain breaking um there's not a lot of testing done with them being diagonal like adjacent like those two there on the left but if they're side by side you have a very high chance of the chain breaking so what i'm gonna do is i would come up to this one here and we'll hit this patch of grass. And this should be safe enough for the chain to continue. It was four away. And it wasn't touching anything else. And the chain will break. Or chain won't break. Hopefully. 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 Another thing that you want to look out for when you're choosing a patch of grass to hunt in. Is make sure that the patch of grass that you're in. Does not have a trainer standing in the grass. There is very, 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 very sad reports of people on Twitter and Reddit and other places that have started radar hunts in patches of grasses with trainers that stand in the grass and the shiny patch spawned underneath the trainer and the trainer did not move. So sadly you lose that shiny and as you see the chain does continue and is that one down there? Yeah, there's one down here. So uh, another thing about like choosing a good spot is best if you can see all the patches. Like as you see there, there's a patch right all the way down there by that tree. It's really hard to see. So I definitely don't recommend going down there. I, this is probably not the best patch of grass to do this in. Um, I could probably find a better one. It's just the one I've been doing it in. Maybe I will find another one because I have yet to been able to get it. I think I actually got up to... 
I get to 30 or 35? I don't remember. I think I think I got to like 30 or 35 with Ponyta and it broke. <laughs> I was so mad. So mad because it's it's so frustrating. Like it's time consuming and the chain just breaks for no reason. Like sometimes it just breaks for no reason and there's nothing you can do about it. There's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Sometimes it just breaks. So as you see here, it's just going to keep continuing and you just keep going and going and going and that's about it and, and as you see if if you don't like the patches you can reset it um really simple like in theory it's really simple i mean i, I watched like one person do it and i mean i, I guess i'm smart i don't know i'm like i was like oh i get this because i never did any radar hunting back in platinum um, or I never played, I actually never played original Diamond and Pearl, I only played Platinum, and I never did any radar hunting in Platinum, so, um, this is a fairly new concept to me, but to me it's fairly simple, it's just, you know, four spaces away, catch them, and the chain continues, if you're lucky, and sometimes it just breaks for no reason, and, but that's it, you just keep doing it over and over and over again, uh, and here's a clip of what it looks like once you actually get to a chain of 40 and you see the shiny sparkles. Yeah, so that was my very first attempt at radar hunting. I got the shiny shinks, and like I said, I was able to chain four of them together. Um, one of them was actually even like two patches away of the shiny patch from where I was, and it still continued the chain. So I got super lucky, got four. Um, I don't know why I need four. I, you only really need three, like for, a, you know, a three-tier evolution, uh, if you want that. It's not required. Um, but that's it. Yeah, guys. So if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe button, hit that thumbs up. Let me know down in the comments below. What are you going to be radar hunting for? And if you need any more tips on BDSP, let me know as well down in the comments. And until next time, Cromer out. Bye.